All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is October 1st, and we have some MLB playoff action to dive into in today's video. Like we always do, we're going to go through each of these games. I'm going to give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays like player props that we like within the game as well. But as always, guys, keep an eye on the pinned comment of this video. If you do want to fade me, all of my final plays are going to be in there. I am pumped for the MLB playoffs because we're coming off of our best MLB regular season to date. We pick up nearly 43 units, which last year, playoffs, regular season, everything included, we picked up, I think it was like 29.8 units, so we've already done way better than that in the regular season. Let's see if we can keep that going. You know, we could be due for a cold streak at some point, but we pick up about six units in the month of September and end the regular season up 43 units in the MLB. I think we deserve the cha-ching. But guys, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button as well. Let's get rocking and rolling here. We're looking at Houston taking on Detroit for game number one. On the mound for Houston is going to be Framber Valdez going up against Tariq Skubal. Um, obviously, Skubal has had a fantastic year, but Framber Valdez has as well. There's a reason why both of these guys are pitching the first playoff game um, for you know each other's team here. Not each other's team, their own team. Um, in terms of this spot, it's been really cool to see what Detroit has done. Detroit has absolutely uh, kind of electrified the, the league um, and how they closed out the year. Now, yes, they dropped the last two games to the White Sox, but overall, that was after they had been clinched and whatnot, right? Like, they won on an absolute tear to even get into this position. Now, Houston um, closed out the year well, uh, had an 88-73 and 73 season, um, if I have that correct. Um, so overall, obviously, you have a Houston here with a home field advantage and a really good pitcher on the mound. I will say that I love Scooble. I'm not saying that Houston's going to go out there and crush him, but uh, this... Houston team just seems to always be built for the playoffs um, in a sense. They get Alvarez back in this spot as well, um, so they should be healthy. Like uh, that first three, Altuve, Alvarez, Tucker, Bregman. Even you go to Diaz and then Pena who can make some big hits. Like what a scary, scary lineup. I don't think Detroit's lineup necessarily competes with that. And if we look at what they've done against lefties over the last 30 days, we can dive into the dashboard here. If you guys do want access to this dashboard, I think it's going to be absolutely crucial for the MLB postseason. It's just $2.99 a month by Becoming a channel member. Link in the pinned comment description. There should be a join button on YouTube as well. But what we see here is Detroit. Obviously, you know, middle of the pack in terms of last 30 days hitting, but when they go up against the lefty, uh, they do struggle. 27th in average, 24th in WRC plus, striking out the second most. And then their power numbers, 25th, 23rd, and 26th in terms of OPS, ISO, and slugging. It just doesn't really compete here with Houston. So uh, I almost reluctantly slash unfortunately lean towards Houston because I'm kind of a believer and I love Scooble. I like how this Tigers team has, uh, you know, put the league on notice, but um, I almost feel like they've already accomplished so much towards the end of the year that maybe now it's like, hey, yo, welcome to the show. Houston probably wins this one. Now, what I will say is that I don't think that this is necessarily uh, a spot in which, uh, you know, Houston dominates. This is probably a low-scoring game. Uh, that total is at 6.5, probably a little too low for me to touch. But I could see, like, a 4-3 or a 3-2 win for Houston. Them kind of winning the game, um, making the big hit when it counts, potentially getting to Detroit's bullpen or something like that. So give me Houston on the money line. That graphic says uh, 155, but right now you can get them at minus 145 over on FanDuel, so a way better price. So Houston on the money line. I'd also lean, I guess, slightly towards the under. It is postseason baseball, um, but if that was seven and a half, I'd like it because I could see a 4-3 game here, but give me Houston on the money line. Main play in this one. I also don't mind now if you can get a good price on it. I haven't seen the actual odds. I'm assuming it's going to be really juiced. Um, Caesars looks like it's actually the lowest one right now. Now that I see it at minus 169, that's pretty juicy. But I don't mind Framber Valdez over one and a half walks. His last two starts against Detroit, five walks and two walks. So uh, maybe that's something that we can kick around as well. It's not like Detroit walks a whole hell of a lot. But in the last 30 days, they've walked the seventh most times against lefties. So maybe that's something to take and, and kind of put in our back pocket. But Again, Houston money line's probably my main lean here. But speaking of player props, guys, go check out Prize Picks and use it throughout these MLB playoffs. Right now, they have a great deal going on. You've heard me talk about it before, and I'll talk about it again because I think this actually is one of the best deals in the DFS space right now. Play a $5 entry. So go sign up today. Place a $5 entry. You literally instantly, no questions asked, no strings attached, you get $50 back into your account. You just place a $5 entry and 10x your money. Like, that is an absolute no-brainer. What if you win that $5 entry, right? Oh, now you get a bunch of money from 
on that as well, and you are off to the races over on Prize Picks. So go join the fun over on Prize Picks. Really, really cool app throughout these MLB playoffs. It is Taco Tuesday as well, so they'll probably be dropping a couple playoff discounted squares, which what a better time to use that $5 entry. Go check it out. That link is in the pinned comment. It's also in the description, or you can just sign up and deposit using code GUYBOSTON. Go check out Prize Picks. All right, let's move on to game number two here. We got Baltimore taking on Kansas City. Baltimore has Corbin Burns on the mound, going up against Cole Reagans here for the Royals. Um, Corbin Burns, obviously... I guess we could consider the pitching advantage here in this spot. Um, he's had a fantastic season. Not to say Reagans hasn't. Obviously, these two teams are um, in the postseason for a reason, and these two guys are leading it off for a reason, right? But um, overall, I do like Corbin Burns' spot. I'm going to lean towards him. Very similar to how we looked at what we just said about um, you know Houston and Detroit. If you look at the batting here, like both pitchers, pretty damn good, right? Like Cole Reagans, actually, his away numbers better than some of Corbin Burns' home numbers. Um, but look at what Kansas City has done recently. Now, I had been saying how they almost pissed away their playoff chances, right? Look at what they've done overall batting last 30 days, and then especially against right-handed pitchers, like, it just doesn't look all that great to me. Baltimore kind of took a step down as well, just batting 244 in the last 30 days um, against lefties, but that's better than 219. You know, their WRC plus, just 91. That's better than 75. Uh, Their ISO... One, uh, 119. Well, that's better than 112. Like, it's it's tough to look at this Royals team and say, yeah, that offense is going to roll and cook and everything like that like they were at the beginning of the year. So, uh, to me, this is probably a spot in which I lean towards another favorite. Um, you have Baltimore with, obviously, a home field advantage as well. I like that spot for them. They're 44 and 37 at home this season. Um, the Royals, 41 and 40. They were a much better home team than they were own team. So um, maybe that's something that can impact it as well. So uh, I don't like paying that juice at minus 160, but I think that this Baltimore team's a little bit more playoff built than we see the Royals. Now, I know I'm just leaning towards the favorites up in this spot so far, but hey, stick around. We got two more games to talk about, but give me Baltimore here. Um, I don't mind the idea of a first five under if we can get a, a nice little price tag at it, because like I said, I'm really not trying to, to rag all over Cole Reagans or Reagans. That's funny if that's if that's a uh, pun intended. Um, so maybe an under four, under four and a half. I think, you know, in this playoffs, it's going to be really hard to use our uh, tried and true under four and a half because we're going to get such low numbers. But uh, under four, still something that I would consider here. Again, Baltimore's offense has just been kind of like mediocre to close out the season. The Royals kind of struggle, but now we have two good pitchers on the mound. So uh, I like the spot there for that first five under. Um in terms of player props, not too, too much I like uh, in this game. But keep an eye on the pinned comment to see if we do ultimately end up rolling with anything. Um, a couple that I looked at, uh, I guess it's not really something that I uh, you know, would necessarily roll with here. Um, but there's some stolen bases props that are like some decent odds for under stolen bases. So we might throw a couple of those in the pinned comment. Um, I'm talking no stolen bases like uh, for minus 150, minus 140. It's like playoff baseball. I don't know if guys are going to be stealing you know, game number one. But that's such like a, I don't even want to necessarily dig into that because it's such an obscure uh, prop to, to throw your way. But uh, they did kind of boil to the top here when finding props. All right, Brewers taking on the Mets. I told you some underdog plays may be coming here, and, and I do like the Mets in this spot. Now, the thing that I would, you know, advise you and advise myself to be weary of is think about how the Mets got into the playoffs, right? Like what they had to do. They had to play the doubleheader, win that one yesterday. Um, what an absolute clutch was it, Lindor, right? With the, I mean, That was electric. That's why MLB playoff baseball does take it to another level. I know that wasn't playoffs, but it meant just as much yesterday, right? Um, But overall, uh, I know they went through a lot yesterday, and now they're traveling to Milwaukee after playing in Atlanta. That's definitely sort of a a reason and rationale, I think, to potentially stay off of them. But um, this is a Mets team that just got kind of whooped up by the Brewers. I think the Mets could come into the playoffs here kind of fired up. They they do have their best pitcher now on the mound, Luis Severino, going up against Freddie Peralta. Freddie Peralta in his last few starts... um, has been decent, so is Severino, but what I like is the Mets offense maybe looking a little bit better than the Brewers. Now, that Mets series included with the Brewers, their offense looked like it was great, right? Um, and But if you look at like the eight or seven or, you know, ten games before that, they only had two really explosive games, one against Arizona in a 10-9 win, give them credit there, and then a 7-2 win against Pittsburgh the day after. Outside of that, it was 1-4-0-1. They did have five against Pittsburgh as well, but then they just exploded against the Mets, right? I think this Milwaukee team 
team could start kind of slow in the playoffs. And, you know, these are going to be low-scoring games, or at least they should be theoretically low-scoring games in the playoffs. If Milwaukee, um, their offense has been kind of inconsistent, I don't like the idea of them rolling in here and hitting up Severino, who um, has decent numbers against them. 48 plate appearances in the past, 241 expected batting average, an expected Woba of 319. Um, I'm not saying that the Mets are going to go out there and score a bunch of runs and win this one, you know, 8-2. to two. No, this is probably another spot in which I'd look at like a 4-3 win or something like that. Obviously, if you haven't picked up yet, uh, I do think that a lot of these are going to be low-scoring games um, until proven otherwise. I'd hate to kind of come into the playoffs and expect, you know, regular season type numbers and then it's like well no these every pitch matters more every swing matters more um you know umps are more scrutinous like this is uh playoff baseball if you don't know gets a little bit uh you know tighter in a sense um but yeah give me the uh, give me the under but i think i would probably we still have some value here on the first five under just minus 140 over on FanDuel. so mets money line as well as the under i don't mind just saying hey Give me Severino here. Go Mets money line in the first five. That way we don't have to worry about them uh, kind of having a, a one tired bullpen or I would say a, um, I guess, uh, you know, kind of shaky bullpen in, in general. Like, um, I think they were ranked, what, 17th in the league in ERA, whereas Milwaukee was a top five bullpen this season. So if we don't want to mess with that, then that is that is totally fair as well. So maybe Mets something in the first five. You're still getting plus money for it. Um, but I do like that first five under as well. All right, San Diego taking on the Braves. Um, we don't necessarily know who's pitching for the Braves yet. I've seen Ian um, Ian Anderson's name thrown around, which, um, yeah, I don't think that he's played much this year in terms of, um, you know, what we're seeing from him. So I don't know if that's the best situation for them, I would say. Um, overall, uh, this is probably a San Diego spot. Michael King on the mound. Um, I hate to jump right to another huge favorite, but uh, this is a Braves team that has just started to hit the fastball really well. Um, but... But Michael King throws the slider, the changeup, the sinker. Then his fourth pitch is the fastball. Um, so it's not even a really favorable spot for the Braves bats. And just like the Mets I just mentioned, they had to fight tooth and nail and almost kind of lost their playoff chances yesterday. So they must be exhausted. Um, they traveled to San Diego now from Atlanta. Uh, I think this is probably a San Diego spot. So, yeah, another heavy favorite here. I know we like Houston, Baltimore, San Diego today. Uh, it is what it is. In terms of a total, but we do like the Mets there and the Mets are plus you know 130 or whatnot um in terms of a total I don't mind the idea of San Diego's offense continuing to stay hot like this may be maybe the first game in which I don't mind the over uh we've seen the San Diego team obviously uh hitting the ball really really well in fact um you know even looking good in that uh, last series that they play Arizona right um they scored five runs in two of those games they averaged 4.7 runs per game this season so uh, I don't mind them in this spot in terms of how they fared against uh, Atlanta last time they played San Diego went out there and I think they scored, um, you know, it was like four, four, three, something like that. Um, I could have that wrong. But prior to that, when they played in Atlanta, that was earlier in the year as well. San Diego absolutely went off in a four game series. They went three, then nine, then six um, in three of those four games. So I think that San Diego could see, uh, you know, a decent little performance here. But I don't know much about the Braves pitcher. Maybe he's an absolute stud, um, but I don't think that this is a great spot for him to come in. I think he's been around for, for a while, right? But in terms of like, recency what we've seen from him uh, I don't know too 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 much so I'm gonna lean towards San Diego definitely minus the 155 it stinks uh very juicy but I don't mind that that uh over maybe we could look at like a San Diego team total over as well if we looked at that so uh full game team total over for them over three and a half would be minus 120 that could definitely cross its way into our board as well because then we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the pitching or San Diego's bats and whatnot, even though I do think Michael King could have a good game. So that's where we're leaning in this spot. And guys, it's actually going to wrap it up for today's video. Now that we have the playoffs, these videos are going to be a little bit shorter. I think I might change up the graphics a little bit. If you know what we do for the NFL where we have the two team logos and then the, the odds down below and whatnot, a little bit cleaner of a look, more work on my end, but happy to do it when we have a slower and smaller slate for the MLB. So we might go ahead and throw something like that out there. But guys, if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and comment 14, letting me know that you made it this far into the end of the video. And let me know what you're rolling with in the comments. Four games today. Obviously, this is going to be very, very fun. We have a lot of good teams that made it. The Diamondbacks, unfortunately not, but every other team that we kind of pulling for and rooting for did pop into the postseason. So I think we are set up for a good MLB postseason. I think this postseason could make a lot of MLB fans out of people because obviously it's like, ah, oh, well, you know, um, MLB's losing fans and all that. It's like, yeah, but if you're betting on these games, they're pretty damn exciting. But I'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out. 